start with congrats on the movie. Thanks. Uh, what is it like, because you filmed this about 17 years ago mm -hmm. because of post-production, so what has it been like waiting to have people see it and then all of a sudden everyone's being very positive online? Um, it's never really happened to me, so it's, <laughs> it's a great feeling. It's an absolutely great feeling to put in hard work and then, you know, people not to be ripping it apart before it comes out because that's always the hard thing is, you know, making these movies and then critics just kill it and then it never gets to see the light of day or, you know, so it's, it's, it's nice that people are responding well to it. Uh, one of the things about this movie is that a lot of the recent DC films have been, I'm going to use the term dark, right. a little darker, you know, uh, but this is bright and fun and colorful. Yeah. Can you sort of talk about that aspect of the film? I think it's just the way people observe life. You know, I mean, I'm very much come from an art form of wabi-sabi and like what is, what's more beautiful, the summer, the spring, the fall, or the winter? I'm a big fan of fall and I'm a big fan of like dead branches and cold and it's your perspective on, I love dark. I think it's beautiful, you know what I mean? Like, so it's just a matter of like what people really love. This is definitely not dark and vibrant and I think the world loves us, that's great. I think it's just a matter of what people love, you know what I mean? Completely. Uh, I am I actually really dig the fact that this is an Aquaman movie and you're not trying to stuff a whole bunch of characters in it. You know, it's just it's your story. Yeah. Um, saying that, if you could have had a cameo, like of a character just walking in the background, who, which other DC character would you have loved to just seen walk by? I mean, <laughs> um, I would, you know, I love Flash. I absolutely love Ezra. He's one of my, you know, he's like family to me. So just to have him on set. But you can't have Flash come strolling through the set, man. It just doesn't work. Sure. <laughs> um, saying that, I, I'm very confident this movie is going to get what we call a sequel. Um, I think it's going to be what we call a hit. Uh -huh. uh, so if you could have a character, would it be Flash in, like, the sequel? I think Wonder Woman would be pretty rad, too. Yeah. Flash and Wonder Woman would be my first two. I don't want to pick one, so I'll pick two. Um, I'm thinking about that and I'm like, yes. Uh, uh, so I believe that every movie has deleted scenes. And I'm curious, uh, what scenes were you sad to see go? Uh, from I haven't the seen the movie yet. Oh, so you're gonna... Yeah, my children were with me when we made Aquaman. So I'm gonna wait until I'm with them. And so we're gonna watch at the premiere in LA. Uh, what, yeah, I can't even imagine what that's gonna be like I know for it's you. gonna be epic, 10 and 11, the first time in my life they can watch anything that I'm in and like, I didn't want them at the Justice League premiere because it was just too, it was just too much. This is obviously it'll be easier with, with just me there. So it'll uh, it's gonna be amazing. You have there's the there's a lot of cool action set pieces in this film, but I want to talk specifically about the fight and on the sub. Uh, talk a little bit about filming that sequence and what is it like filming when you're basically shirtless the whole time? I mean, are you? It, it has to be challenging in terms of like diet and trying to keep yourself in shape. Well, no, because I got called into an office and they were watching the, they did like a test and I wasn't supposed to be shirtless in a scene. I was supposed to have a tank top on because it, we weren't ready to do the shirtless scene yet. Because it takes a long time to like get, you have to starve yourself. And I wasn't ready yet. And, and uh, Peter Saffron's like, we really want you to do this scene shirtless. And I'm like, dude, I'm not there yet. And uh, so James and they really wanted that to happen. Fuck it. <laughs> so I took a goddamn shirt off and just fight. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, Aquaman's the kind of guy who's not sitting around doing sit-ups anyways. You know what I mean? Like, he'll have a pint and he missed happy hours. So I thought it was appropriate anyway. So. I would not have known you were not in shape for it. Um, yeah, that's, that's what I have. Um, <laughs> Uh, talk a little bit about one of the things that I also really dig about this is that the film really goes for it. It's honest to the character, it's honest to the source material, and there's some weird shit in it, and that's cool. Yeah. Uh, can you sort of talk about that? Um, I try to do my best at, on being honest to it, but I mean, as far as James yeah. making a world that's building sharks that people are riding or sea dragons, and you dig that, that's it's it's cool. I think it's not taking itself too seriously, which is also another fun thing about it, right? Completely. Yeah, so it's that's probably fits into the whole dark aspect over vibrant and just fun, because um, we're going to a whole different world. So I thanks <laughs> for the honesty part. I'm glad that, that that you dig it. Right. No, completely. I I mean, I'm sure you'll you'll see. It's it's going over very well.